Hello, 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 guys. Gasland and this big nose hail you. And today, as you can fuck see, we are going to take a look on Demonology Warlock, on the basics, on how it plays on Battle for Azeroth. This is some sort of a guide for new players, returning players, or just the curious players who want to see what exactly the Demonology Warlock brand is doing. And perhaps also for late leaders who want to yell at their new bunch of demonology warlocks, what the fuck they are doing bad. So, let's dive into that. I'm going to open the spellbook before we get to anything and walk slowly through all the spells we got. As you can see, we got some changes or some removals. And this is the removal of two spells. Demonic Empowerment and... Life tap. Demonic empowerment removed. Fuck yes. Finally, it's not that spammy as it was on Legion, but the life tap removal, although I was happy about it, it brought one problem with, with it. And that's our mobility. Because we could still use the free GCD where we were not casting anything for the movement. We were not so like punished that hard when we used life tap to move. But with that, sorry, with that thing gone, our movement kind of is hurt. But we have so many toys that fuck movement. Of course, we have banish our great CC on aberrations, demons, and elementals. We have burning life, which is a talent. Uh, just this little speed hack that slowly kills us. Cold Rest Stalkers, Our Little Dogs, of course Hearthstone, of course Sowell is still around, unfortunately, so that's spam. Warlock HS, or HS, or however the fuck should be it spelled. Fuck it. But there is a new. not animation, but new look to the Sowell, which I fucking like. And we have Demon Ball, which is a comeback of long forgotten and long gone spell called Soulfire, but it was renamed. Morphid Demonology, class theme, or spec theme, spec fantasy, whatever. And it deals a shit ton of damage, it generates two slow shards, it has pretty long cast time, but it's proking free, or not free, but instant. I'm going to get to that once we get the passives. Of course, Demonic Gateway. You can't use that here, get the fuck off, why the fuck can't I use that here? There is like, what the, what is the fucking problem with you, Blizzard? Okay, obviously I cannot use it. We have, of course, Drain Life, nothing has changed. Enslave Demon, spell you are not going to use in BFA. Eye of Killrock. I see you, bitch. Blop. Fear. Pretty handy sometimes. Hand of Gul'dan, our main soul shard spender, which summons the army of imps. The thing that we want from Demonology Warlock, it also deals AoE damage, so it's all purpose spell. Health Funnel, of course, healing our demon. We all know what it does. Oh, your demon health is already full. Shame. But we got a new baseline. Here we got it. New stuff. Implosion. As you might remember, it was a talent on Legion and it fucking sucked. But now it was made a baseline and it doesn't suck because it's the baseline. It sends the imps and then you do damage. Ah, ah. Come back, you nasty bastard. Where have I ended? Yeah, there is a of summoning, of course. Television. We all know what that stands for because everyone wants summon. They stand next to you and they won't summon. Fuck them. Shadow Bolt, our main filler. It's just a Shadow Bolt, yeah? I'm going to put pet on passive. Just cast a Shadow Bolt, throws it there, generates all shard. Easy. Shadow Fury was made the baseline. It's our AoE stun, but it has 1 minute or 45 seconds with talent cooldown. And this is a cast time. So. It's not that good as it seems. Of course, Soulstone, a Glorious Compatress, or 
in insurance type of thing when we know we are going to die, you are going to use this pretty often while you are questing. Got a summon demon, you can pick whatever the fuck you want. Demonic Tyrant, our cooldown, which slightly works like the demonic empowerment used to work. You summon a big guy who empowers your demons by 15%, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 15%. It increases the duration by 15 seconds, and he hits quite significantly. And this is pretty funny. Of course, then you have Unending Breath, which gives us some water breathing and swim speed. Pretty handy when questing, and you are so lazy to farm that water straight in mountains. I am, because you were not playing on Pandaria. Unending Resolve, of course, our defensive. And now let's get the passives. Demonic Core. This is the thing that procs the instant demon bots. When your imp die or your dresstalker die, there is a chance to get a proc of demonic core. Imp gives a 10% chance. Pelhounds have 100% chance. You can store four stacks of the debuff, or not debuff, buff of the proc. And it just makes your demonic core instant. You can see that when like I got this things on the screen and this thing lighted up. Then we have our mastery, master demonologist. Increases the damage done by your demons by some percent. Oh yes. It's basically the same as on Legion. But it doesn't require to cast that one spell that you are spamming either way. It's just passive. Great. And of course Soul Leech. Shared for all warlocks, all single target damage done by you and your minions grants you blah 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 absorption for the damage dealt up to 10% of maximum health. And then Soul Link thinks this thing is not leaving us. 20% of all damage you take is taken by your demonic pet instead. We have 20% flat out damage reduction. Passive. All the time. We are bad as. So shards, of course, these things, and Codex of Zerath, that's my sweet green fire burning ass. Without any speaking of talents and using the gadgets from talents, our basic rotation looks like this. We precast Demon Bolt around 4 or 5 seconds before the pool, throw it out, and followed by the rest talkers, let's say. Some Shadow Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Shadow Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Tyrant. And now we, dis we do some damage. Yep. That's how the basic looks. Let's talk about talents now, because talents are where the Class variability maybe comes from. Row 15. Dreadleash. This increases the damage your Dreadstalkers do when they jump on the target. And the jump also deals AoE damage to everything within 8 yards of the target. Okay. This is pretty strong. Because it's a, some sort of sustained AoE. It has no other button to press for you. So it's not some crazy hard complication of your life. And it makes Dressel Cross hit hard and they hit hard for like even basically they hit hard. And we have Demonic Strength, which makes your Doom Guard go into a fucking Blade Storm. But empowered Blade Storm. Oh by the way, there is one thing I forgot to mention, and it's a quality of life change. Rose Storm is now on Autocast. That's right. It's on Autocast. Mwah! Glorious! Whew. And then we have this motherfucker badass thing called Bile Scourge Bumbers. Bow. It opens a portal above you and the portal bombards the area. <laughs> like this. If this doesn't look badass, then I don't know what does. What I'm afraid about is damage output, and especially on the single target stuff, because. The Red Leash is just 
in your basic rotation, you just make the little hit AoE and hit them hard. Like, it doesn't add any other slow shard pender, it doesn't add any other button you should press. I'm going to stick with the red leash. But maybe on the early dungeons where you will be leveling, basket bombers might be good. And demonic strength is pretty good when you are leveling and pulling big, big mob, mob packs. Because then you just send the Felgar there, he does his normal blaze storm, then you put demonic strength, he does his empowered blaze storm, and everything is dead. At least until level 115, because then things go really into shit. Property. Demonic Calling, Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt have a chance to make your next code rest code one less soul shard and have no cast time. This this is great. Because it combines the legendary shoulders from Legion, which were pretty fucking strong, and it also combines it with the the the, the, the PvP talent, which made the rest of instant cast. And because it has the 20% chance, like two of your spells that you are hardcasting, have the 20% chance to make a 20 second cooldown to be instant cast. You have it at like 98% of the cases where you are casting the stalkers. Unless, of course, you play with Soul Conduit and you are really lucky and you are just spamming handle cooldowns, and that happened to me. Then we have Power Siphon. Which kills two of your items and gives you two charges of demonic core, which gives you two instant demon bolts. Great! It might be really good at certain situations, especially with the other portal synergy, which I'm going to talk about later. And then we have Doom, the thing that should not fucking be there. There should be something more innovative, something better, something more engaging. But it does what Doom does, of course. You place on the target. You don't give a fuck about it for 30 seconds, then it gives and it deals some damage, and it gives you soul shard. Well, because you don't count on that 30 second soul shard because you fucking lose a track even with a weak aura, then the soul shard goes into complete nothingness, and you are just sitting there like, what the fuck? That's doom. But they added some something that may may make it valuable, and that is that if the doom kills a target. There is a 5% chance to summon a Doom Guard to fight for 25 seconds. I did some research on that, and it seems that the Doom doesn't have to do the killing blow. All that it needs to be is. it needs to be there. If the target dies and Doom is there, Doom Guard has a 5% chance to be summoned. 5% chance to summon Doom Guard. 5%. And it's on the row with the Power Siphon and Demonic Calling. That's not gonna see much place. Row 45, of course, the defensive or movement row. Demon skin increases your soul leech and gives soul leech passive generation. Then, of course, Dark Pact, which sacrifices your health and shields you for a shit ton of shield. It's usable when you are like stunned or feared or maybe polymorphed. Pretty fucking handy, this is the active immortality, demon skin is passive immortality, and then of course we have burning rush, our burning ass. Uh, whoa, this sweet sweet hack. And it slowly kills you, but you are fast. Row 60, this is where things get really interesting, because like on row 15, 30 and 45 I can I can say what I'm going to pick with 98% of certainty on how much damage or how, or how much damage will it de deal or how it will impact my movement or survivability. But on row 60 I'm really not sure. From the shadows. Casting called Restalkers causes the target to take 20% additional shadow flame damage from you for the next 12 seconds. If I'm not mistaken, this doesn't count a pet damage, only your damage. But considering how hard the demon bolt hits, and that shadow bolt is not some empty filler like it was on Legion as well, then from the shadows is pretty decent, especially when you combine it with sacrifice souls, because you cast dress stalkers, target takes 20% additional damage from 
your like demon bot and shadow bot and hand of Gul'dan and possibly also train life. And shadow bot and demon bot are empowered by by every demon you have out. Like it hits really hard. Like I've managed to hit 20 k with demon bot and I was testing it. And 20 k with demon bot. That's even more the destruction hits with Grimoire of Supremacy and Chaos Bots, like in the open phase. Or not more, but it's comparable. So it makes you hit pretty hard. Then we have Soul Strike, which is a button you have to take care of. But it has 50 yard range. By the way, this is the range of Marksmanship Hunters. 10 second cooldown, generates one soul shard and it commands your fur guard to strike into the soul of its enemy dealing some shadow damage. This might be also good because... Yes, it's one button more to your rotation. And one, one more button to take care of and if I'm not mistaken it, it is also on GCD. Because many things are on GCD. Yes, it's on GCD but it's a... Like every 10 seconds you get... Free soul shard. It goes no mana. Not that mana would be a thing, unless you are drain lifing. But it's instant cast, it deals damage, it gives you soul shard. What more do you want? And then we have summon Wild Fiend. This is another demon to summon. It goes one soul shard. It summons this little fella. Come in, zoom on him. He's like, whoa, what the fuck is going on around? I don't want to be here, or I want to be here, but give me something to kill. And then he just jumps on some target, puts some dot on it, and it hits hard. It's on 45 second cooldown, so it works like you cast one Wild Fiend combined with the Tyrant, then you cast one Wild Fiend on its own, and one Wild Fiend with Tyrant, etc, etc. I like Wild Fiend, so I'm going to stick with him, because he looks cool. Rose 75... Dark Fury reduces cooldown of the Shadow Fury by 15 seconds, which might be good when you when you are forced to do some CCing or some AoE stunning. Mortal Coil, pretty fucking handy on leveling, I have to say, because it fears the target, that's not important. What is important for the leveling is that it heals you for 20% of your maximum health. This stun saved my life many times and until I got the idea that I might use it as a self heal. I was dying a lot. And then of course we have Demon X Circle, which is probably going to be go to end raids. You summon a circle. And then with another spell, because it was here, Demon X Circle teleport. I'm going to throw it out. You just teleport to the circle. And as you can see the pile of ashes is still there. Room 90. Again, something I'm not entirely sure how it will work out by the sheer numbers. Soul Conduit still doing the same as on Legion. Every soul shard you spend has a 50% chance to be refunded. Pretty good. Especially on Demonology, because every soul shard means more demons, which means more damage, and eventually more demons means more. More demon bots, which means more soul shards, which means more demons, which means more demon bots, which means more soul shards, and it's just insane. I have even got into moments where I was overcapping uh, demonic core procs. And that was like fucking insane. Inner demons. You passively summon a Valadin to fight for you every 12 seconds and have a 10% chance to also summon an additional inner demon to fight for you. Which means that as you are staying like that, every few seconds there will be an imp. Sometimes it may be Shivara, and the Fell Guard, and the Fell Hunter. Malkazar, whatever the else. I don't like the like the, the fact that it's every 12 seconds and it's just plain passive because the, the chance for summoning the big cunts which hits really hard is good but having it at least under some form of control of the soul conduit is better. Grimoire Felgard this is Grimoire of Service on Legion. Basically, cut down to Felguard because you were rarely using anything else than Felguard anyway. Summon to Felguard who attacks the target for 15 seconds and deals 50% increased damage. 
easy. Or also the full guard testament from Grimo Armor standard target, it has 1.5 minute cooldown, which means that every Grimoire Fell Guard you summon, you can basically extend with the Demonic Tyrant. It might be also good, it's a Soul Shard Pender, goes on Soul Shards, so it might be actually good to play with Tender Portal. But I'm going to talk about it later on. And then Row 100. And this is probably where uh, you will build. You will make the build around these talents on the last row. Because these talents are fucking insane. Sacrifice Souls. Already mentioned. Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt deal 5% additional damage per demon you have summoned. Which means that you summon your fucking army, especially with, when you prolong it with the Tyrant. And then you get the procs of Demonic Core. Maybe like through Power Siphon. And then you just... <laughs> <laughs> then you just steal aggro because no tank can keep up with that crazy fucking hit. Demonic Conception. Your demonic tyrant now, dis now destroys and absorbs the remaining power of all of Violet Imps and power himself. Which means you summon imps, you cast the demonic tyrant, he eats the imps, he's OP as fuck and he has heart. I don't like this playstyle, and but it deals the same damage as the other three, other three talent choices. But I don't really like it. I like the demonic army, and not one, but it's like a badass overpowered demon. And then we have the golden jewel, Nether Portal. There's open a portal to the twisting Nether for 20 seconds. Every time you spend soul shards, you will also command demons from the Nether to come and fight for you. What does that mean? Every time you spend soul shards, not for every soul shard you spend. So, probably what you are going to, or what you want to achieve, is to spend or cast as many soul shard spenders as possible. So, taking Grimoire of Elgard, this, taking Wild Fiend, taking probably Demonic Calling when you proc it. You open a portal, you throw out this fella, then you throw out the Grimoire Fell Guard, which I'm not going to do that right now, probably. And then you throw out the Red Stalkers, then you throw out some Shadow Bolts to cast Hand of Gul'dan, then you throw out Demonic Tyrant, and you have an army of demons there, which will stay there, and then you can eventually try to pull some more counts there, okay? That's... And before we get into any other crazy... like a crazy thinking about the playstyles and explaining, let's take also a look on the stats. So, stat priorities. In my... Humble opinion, because I am not an Excel master and I wasn't able to find any same some days. But in my honest opinion about how the stats will play, haste will be number one. Because haste means you get more demons out and demons scale with haste because the more haste you have, the more haste they have. So they hit hard, they hit faster, so it's a double win-win. You summon more demons, which attack faster. That's number one. It will be followed by mastery. Because it's just a plain increase of their damage. But you will want to keep mastery and critical strike somewhere around the same number. Because whereas mastery increases only damage of your demons, critical strike increases also your damage. And your damage is not that insignificant as on Legion. Because when you look on the Legion damage matter, maybe I have a picture of somewhere floating around the screen. Demons deal the most damage. You do really nothing. You are like somewhere around the 0.5% for each of your damaging spells. Or well, not each, but both of your damaging spells. And then like now... You are higher in this. And so, 
keeping crit and mastery somewhere balanced. Thanks to the master account, I think it will be somewhere like a three to two, like three points of like three percent of mastery to two two percent of crit if it will be possible. And then versatility. Well, if there is nothing better to take, then versatility. Yeah. And then of course the main set is intellect, but intellect is not everything you are gonna wear. wear. Or not everything, like you can see like the fingers don't have intellect and probably Heart of Azeroth also. Oh Heart of Azeroth does have intellect. But rings don't have intellect and many fingers don't have intellect. But that's my thing. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look on the different talent builds I have figured out might be actually good. As I said, I'm not some Excel master as I like to call them. What I'm going to do now is how it feels, how it plays, and how much damage it does. So, when we start sacrificing Soul as the level 100 pick, then we are left with the 90 pick because we will go from down to top. With either Soul Conduit or Inner Demons, because both of these could provide us with constant, constant more numbers of demons. And I'm also going to do one thing, and that's to move this frame here. Just to have a better look on it. And move this frame here. So it somehow remind, so it somehow resembles my live UI. At least slightly. Okay. So, Soul Conduit or Inner Demons? I will go with Soul Conduit. Because that I feel like I'm doing something more than with just Inner Demons. Row 75 doesn't matter. Row 60. For the Sacrifice Souls, I recommend taking from the Shadows because it gives 20% buff to the Demon Balls you cast, and the Demon Balls you cast are buffed as fuck from the Sacrifice Souls. So, it's pretty strong synergy. Row 45 doesn't fucking matter. Row 30... I'm going to go with Power Siphon. Because although it, it reduces the number of imps you have out, it gives you two free demon balls which are buffed by the remaining souls. Or not remaining souls, but remaining demons. So, good. And then row 15, as it doesn't summon any, any additional demons. Dark Leash, fuck off. Of course, I set my pet to assist because I was trying it out and I was like, what the fuck, why am I doing like a one third less DPS than I was doing the last try? And then I was just like, fuck, I had a pet on passive. So, let's get into that. Precast Demon Bolt, followed by Dress Talkers, Hand of Gul'dan, then Shadow Bolt and Hand of Gul'dan. And then, of course, it depends on the procs from Soul Conduit. And eventually, cast. In demonic parent, which will make those imps stand there for long, sacrificing them and just spamming demon bolts. So let's do this. Demon bolt, rest stalkers, shadow bolt, Gul'dan, Gul'dan, and let's make a spray. I will make the tyrant enough. Yes, tyrant is out. Okay, sacrifice counts. One, boom, and there we go. Let's make some damage. Because it's starting to hit hard. Demonic core is proking. Demon balls are going. And it's just beautiful. You still are rotating many imps out, many dress talkers, you still feel like a fucking summoner. But eventually, you are still doing pretty solid amount of damage just by yourself. Like, look on it. The Demon Bolt does w the same damage as the other imps, basically. So, you don't feel so reliable on the imps that you summon and your damage is not somewhere down there. Yeah, it's pretty fucking good and pretty fucking satisfying.
Just summoning demons, throwing out some demon bolts, shadow bolts, tyrants, and feel broken. And that's what warlocks are about, boy. That's the whole fucking point of playing warlock. You need to feel broken. Broken as fuck. Go there! <laughs> okay, so let's move to another build. And now for the demonic consumption build. Of course, on row 100 you pick demonic consumption. On row 90, it's either soul conduit or inner demons. I will be more inclined for the inner demons because soul conduit is still soul conduit. It's still a complete RNG. But inner demons, you have 100% that you will have those one or two imps out when when you was cast this big camp. Whereas with soul conduit, you can either have 20 of them. Or only nine or six when you are like when you have bad luck so I will still stick to the con soul conduit and pray that RNG will be in my favor of course row 75 doesn't fucking matter row 60 here I think that demonic consumption is not much like influence of what you will play with this, so I will still stick to From the Shadows, which might be a wrong pick, but oh, doesn't matter. It's just, I, I would not feel like that punishing for missing uh, the cooldown of Soul Strike or for spending that one Soul Shard on another demon than the Imps. Row 30, here I would like to go with the Demonic Calling, because you are still stockpiling Imps for the demonic commander to eat and not to, for yourself to eat. And demonic calling gives us an, an additional soul shard. Like we get a safe soul shard from casting the stalkers, which eventually means that we we have saving a soul shard. And then of course red leash because this doesn't affect much. Once more, the the precast is same demon bolt. Discount, Shadow Bolt, Land of Gulden, one, second Gulden, third Gulden, and let's look at Tyrant up. You are supposed to attack with it! Good, he attacks. And of course, get the Dress Talkers out. Like, he hits like a fucking track. But he hits like that only once, once a while. So, like, I don't actually know like, what to do with this build, if I should claim it to be good or bad, or... It really depends on how you manage to get the imps out and the commander to summon, and then you are also dependent on his crits, and... You are dependent as fuck on your mastery and his haste and on your haste because the more haste you get out, the more demons you get out and I don't know man. That is that the problem that when you summon the commander you are out of the demonic core procs for a while. And that also like a kinda Lowers the play play experience because you you want to cast those instant demon bots and get those soul shards and summon that canton of imps to get out and now it might be actually pretty funny. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, he ate them and now let's see how hard will he. Have. I don't know. It's hard for a while, but not my, not definitely not something I'm going to play. I have to say it like this. 
But eventually it may be good and I may be just bad or maybe I should take a power cyclone and somehow micromanage it to put out the most of it or maybe this will become strong as fuck in, in the later game when you will have enough haste to get enough demons up to, for the commander to summon and then commander hit hard enough. We will have to see. For now I'm casting demonic consumption and build around it away something that I don't like, it feels clunky and it it doesn't feel like this Master Imp Summoner. And now let's talk about the Golden Gem of Battle for Azor, Demonology Warlock. Nether Portal build. <laughs> why is it Nether? Like, why is the Nether Portal a Golden Gem? Because it gives you a literal demonic army of various demons. Brilliant. So, for the nether portal, you want to maximize the spell you spent so short on. So you are definitely going to take either Soul Conduit or Grimoire. That depends if you, like with Soul Conduit you will probably cast one or two more so short spenders, probably Hand of Gul'dan, during the nether portal window. Uh, with Grimoire you just give uh, guaranteed one more so shard spender which will summon one demon. The demon summons from another portal that are not based on the so shards you spent, but on the so shard spender itself. So you cast one hand of Gul'dan for three so shards, but you get only one demon from the other portal. I'm actually going to go with Soul Conduit, because it might be funnier. <laughs> Then of course row 75 doesn't matter, row 60, Vile Fiend, definitely. Because Vile Fiend hits significantly, as you can see here. Yeah, here you can see like his uh, damage over time effect, like what the fuck? And then there somewhere down is his like melee attack. So that's 2.5 plus 4.7, it's like 7.2. Here is around 10% of my damage. That's not bad. Close. Uh, row 45 of course doesn't matter. Row 30, I think Power Siphon here might be a better one. And then uh, row 15, Dread Leash. Or maybe Bicycle Bumpers, again it's a so short spender, but I'm not 100% sure how it would work out, because it's like, you spend two so shards, you deal some damage with that, you summon a demon, but then like eventually with the imps from the hand of Gul'dan you are about to do more damage than you are about to do with the last performers. So I'm not 100 sure how that will work out. I'm still going to go with that. What we want to do now is to cast the demon bolt, get the hand of Gul'dan down, summon the imps, Slowly, stuck to five shards, open the portal, Vile Fiend, Demon Bolt, Dread Stalkers, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Tyrant, and then try to get out as much as possible, as much as we can. Because like, those things that we got out now, they are just gonna stick there. They, they, will, they will be there, and everything else is bonus. It's better to play it safely, than risk getting out more demons, and eventually losing the Wild Fiend and the Dreadstalkers first, and then like having uh, the commander just um, like prolong three imps and a new set of Dreadstalkers, because everything else will just fall off. And you just go out and summon imps, Again, and we have full cooldown on Valfian ready. Again, like some like sacrificing some imps for demonic core, summoning more imps, summoning even more imps, and we are just going the usual sustain until you get a cooldown on the other portal, and then you build once more to the five. Shards, you cast another portal, and you repeat. Important thing to have uh, to like have prepared is to have cooldown on every of those instant so shard spenders, and have some uh, demonic core procs ready. 
in that way you can get out the, the most of this glorious spammy thingy with the army of demons which looks badass and will probably piss off every tank because well, because it's just an uh, amount of ads, or amount of pets around the target, which they will see, because you can see those demons you summon, and not only you, but everyone around you can see those demons you summon as well. And that's why, that's how we are rolling around. But then there is a the little problem, which sometimes happens, and that's overcapping the demonic core, which I spoke about previously, and you could see it now, because I got... Like three procs of demonic core, I had two procs ready and it overcapped one proc of demonic core. But it's still like better to overcap them than don't have them at all. And but and definitely what you don't want to do is to overcap some shots because that fucking sucks. And now as you can see like the nether portal cooldown is coming closer. Demonic tired and cooldown as well. Wild film cooldown, everything is starting to line up. And I'll probably save those dress stalkers For a moment I will open the portal. Which is gonna happen now. And just pray that that the other stuff we are about to summon will make it in time. Yes. Wild Fiend out. Hand of Gul'dan. And one more Hand of Gul'dan. Now the risk was worthy. Tyrant out. And we got some damage rolling around again. I lost the Dress Talkers there, but I got more demons out from the portal. And the demons from the portal hit pretty hard. So it's not like that bad. And that is how we roll probably with the funniest build and also some kind of high risk, high reward type of build on the Prasor. Because demonology with the nether portal build, like really you have the risk of losing everything and get out uh, some get out many demons and have the great damage. Like uh, 4.5k is a great damage on my gear, like 303 item level, that's uh, pretty low. Because I just leveled it up and did the Warfront from which I got the boots and the waist and the wrist, and I am not farming anything. My Heart of Azeroth level is pretty low, it's just like uh, the leveling one, and I did some island expeditions. So I definitely could use some more grind as well. And. Like I have only 10% of haste, and like 30% of mastery, and the mastery scaling is pretty, like pretty good. Don't get me wrong, and yeah, of course, also probably staying there is not the best idea because the tyrant is sometimes running away, so he is not getting the most damage out as he should or could. But you get the idea of what you should do with this build and again as you can see it feels just fucking good because you just sometimes get an insane army of imps out and oh boy it's just great go die you can't Now let me talk for a minute about the build that is best for leveling as I find out the hard way. On the row 15 you are you want you will want to go with either the Dread Leash or Demonic Strength. Dread Leash because it provides you some solid uh, multiple head cleaving when the fight is longer, but when you uh, do mass pull it's better than demonic strength. Because you just mass pull the shit and Redguard does his Spinning around and you are okay. On row 30, I, I recommend you taking the power siphon because you get out aims, you sacrifice aims, and you get out the burst damage with me, which will kill the mob fast. 
We have Demon Bolt. And like it's like the mob can survive when you are leveling up like two or three demon bots, more or less. That's pretty well. Like it's pretty good to have this thing around. On row 45, take demon skin. There is no question about it. Especially like when you are later on like you will play with the Void Walker from time to time, because the Red Guard can't take that much damage as the Void Walker can. Power Siphon or not power siphon, demon skin gives him a pretty solid absorption passively. You can see he has like over 8 8k or almost 9 9k absorption. Uh, like he has 60k health, so he's on 70k health. You are like right now I'm at 84k health. This is a this is a like a bucket tank. And by the way, a little tip that you are going to probably do, uh, or you will need to do, maybe in some certain cases, is that you bind uh, movement, a like movement command for pet. Because some ads actually require kiting. Because especially in Voldoom, they do like a, a stupid like a sandstorm around them which makes them dodge everything and it deals the damage so you will need to move the void walker out for the mobs to get out so you could eventually start the damage run it's also good that you can move the pet while you are casting so you doesn't actually need to break anything then on the row 60 i would recommend taking wild feet because sometimes you just run into a Dark mob and Wild Fiend gives you a solid hit for the mob to basically fuck him out. On the row 75, definitely like Mortal Coil. This talent for leveling is just fucking glorious because sometimes the demon dies and the mobs go after you, or the mob, especially when you are fighting an elite. And you are either out of soul shards or they're the stupid back strikes. Which prevents you from resummoning a demon or changing a demon in the fight. I'm, it's not intended as a bug, it happens only sometimes. And I'm not sure if Blizzard is intending to repair the bug. Because uh, it's around beta for like two weeks or three. Whatever. And uh, sometimes it's just better to fear the mob, heal up, run away, drain life, and then just somehow take it down. You'll probably not do much of the kiting. Anyway, because you don't have any instant mobility and you don't have much slows. Then on the row 90, this is hard to choose directly. Like Soul Conduit gives you more more damage plainly, inner demons as well. But I would go with Grimoire because it's a stun. It's one free stun that you can use, which is great. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that when you have Demonic Swing picked, for, in order to use this, you have to have the Felguard up. And when you don't have Felguard up, well, it will not work. You will be hitting the fight. Why the fuck? The Wind Walker doesn't do any damage, but it works only on the Felguard. So, you, when you are rolling around the Wind Walker, take that leash. And then on the row 100, I recommend taking Sacrifice Souls. Because demonic consumption requires a proper long build-up for the demonic commander to eat the imps and do damage. The other portal requires even longer and more proper build-up. And in the outside environment of questing, you have no fucking idea. You have no fucking chance and idea to do that. Like uh, the fights are usually too short to play it properly to have the feeling of it, uh, or they hit hard and you just have to. Run away and you you just don't play this pro like you have no chance to play this. But in sacrifice souls you get the damage bonus just by doing what you normally do and the mobs are dying faster. As I was editing the video I have another one thing. I forgot to talk about AoE rotation. Come back and come. So for the AoE, you uh, 
You, depending on the situation, pick one of these three talents, because those are the AoE ones. And then you will probably go with Soul Conduit, because, again, it refunds Soul Shards, and refunded Soul Shards mean more hand of cooldown, which means more, more AoE damage and more Imps, and more Imps means that you can cast more and more effective Implosions. And that's how you roll around. Because I'm a lazy cunt, and you know what, because I'm a lazy cunt, I will not take that leash, and I will not take demon strength, I will take Bar Squish Bombers because they look badass. So let's take Bar Squish Bombers, let's zoom out, and let's do this. So I will take bombs, Bombers, and the demon jumps in, he starts his Blade Storm, and holy shit, it actually is a cunt ton of Burst AoE. Then of course I cast the Hand of Gul'dan, and I throw in Imps, because there is a little gasp between the Hand of Gul'dan falling and Imps spawning. I have a, I have a time to cast the new Shadow Bolt, then like, or, or the Implosion, throw it on there, and having those free spawn and... Boy, this rotation is pretty awesome. And I take my previous statement about uh, Biosquid Bombers doing no damage back, because fuck... They hurt a lot. <laughs> okay, so this is how we basically do AoE damage with Demonology Warlock on Battle for Azeroth. What you are going to do since since Wednesday. Because that's when the pre-patch comes out and I fucking told you so. And now to the previous schedule of the of the Azerite armor. Alright, so the other right trade. I'm looking at the Woody root table because the trades are basically the same. I mean the spec ones. So we have Supreme Commander. When your demonic tyrant expires, consumes its life essence, granting you a stack of demonic core that increases your intellect by something for 15 seconds. Which means that demonic commander gives you demonic core. Good. And it increases your intellect. Also good. Then we have explosive potential. When you, when you implode uh, three or more imps, you gain some haste for six seconds. This could be good, but like it, it's definitely good on AoE, because your AoE rotation is basically Hand of Gul'dan, Implosion, Hand of Gul'dan, Implosion, Hand of Gul'dan, Implosion. But, yeah. On single target, it's not that good. But it's still better than nothing. Better than what Shadow Priest got. Okay, this is what we've checked. Umbral Blaze. Hand of Gul'dan has 15% chance to burn its target for something. Additional Shadow Flame damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. Basically, Hand of Gul'dan sometimes randomly burns its primary target. It doesn't burn anything around it, so it's not good for AoE situations. Like, it's not that good. But basically, it's you can still have it. Nothing will... Like, go into some crazy shit. The one that I kinda like is this one. Forbidden Knowledge. Call their stalkers a 30% chance to make your next, next non-instant demon bot deal 4554 additional damage. I'm looking at the normal Uldir stuff, which is like a 355 icon level. 4.5 thousand, yeah? And normally demon bot hits for 2000. Yeah, this is basically like the Fire Mage Legendary Wrist. It's badass as fuck. As badass as it can get. And eventually when you play properly with the Sacrificed Souls and uh, the Dress Talker does increased Shadow Flame damage, this will hit like a fucking truck. So I would definitely say that this one is good. And it of course alters your gameplay because you have to stay still for those 4.5 seconds and cast the shit out. Then we have the last one, 
demonic matter and the Gul'dan uh, deals in insignificant amount of additional damage and has 5% chance per soul shard spent that I found a soul shard. That means that Hand of Gul'dan basically gets 15% because you will always cast the Hand of Gul'dan at 3 soul shards. It gets 15% chance to refound a soul shard. That's good. And as far as I can tell, these traits work like they work in independently. So if you have this one three times, then you will have 15% chance to refund every soul shard you spend. That's good. That's like that's very fucking good. Combine it with a soul conduit and you are you don't even have to cast like a shadow bolt, you will just Rotate the hand of Gul'dan, and uh, sometimes an instant demon bolt. It's pretty fucking good. And uh, there is also one thing, and that comes from this one. When you have two of these, just as I do now, because I have it in my head. No, not head. I have it in my shoulders and chest. It still gives you only one demonic card, but the haste buff stacks. So on this item level, it's giving me 355 intellect, and when I, when it procs and the demon commander dies, I am gaining like 710 intellect, and that's not. It's pretty significant. Okay, and with the other right rate item the way, let's end this video. So if you have liked my guide and if you have found it somehow useful, then give this guide and me a like. If you have disliked this, and of course, give the dislike and use the comment section down below what you don't like. Uh, do you disagree with me or is it just that it's me or something else? Feel free to use it, it's, it's there for this purpose. Then of course use the comment section down below if you want to tell me what you think about the demonology warlock. Like, I got something wrong, do you want to correct me? Feel free to do so. And then, if you want to see my other guides and uh, some speculation and maybe a storytelling once I get my hands into that again, then feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I put up another video. And if you want to support me somehow, then feel free to take this video or other videos and share it whenever you can. And if you have disliked me so much that you would like to my life, then feel free to take a link to this video or any of my other videos on my channel and post it on your Twitter, Facebook, Discord or maybe even on your YouTube channel. And say something like, hey guys, come and make this fucking, this fucking idiot retarded, he doesn't know what he's talking about, blah blah blah, blah you heard that stuff. Why? Because I want to learn a new ways of toxicity because I'm repeating myself and I still can't find anything to kinda boost me up. And so, guys, thank you for watching, I hope to I hope I helped you somehow, and I will see you somewhere in the future. Bye-bye!